Hi everyone, it's uh, Simon here, and today I have a three-part tutorial on HDRs. Now, um, if you've been using Cinema 4D for a while, there are some um, basic HDRs in your uh, content browser library. In the latest version R17, they can be found in the Prime Lights, uh, no, sorry, Presets, Light Setups, HDRs. And to get access to one of these, you just need to create a new material, open it up, um, have a look through, see which one you want. Uh, let's go for that one and literally drag it onto there like so. And if you want it in the luminance channel as well, just turn that on. Click, drag the image, drag it over to here, then let it go on there. And there we go. That's all ready to go onto a sky dome. Now, HDRs are great. They're fantastic for lighting, but they also can be quite limited. And sometimes you can't quite find the HDR that you want to use. So we've created your material. Uh, next, you need to put it onto a sky object, not a physical sky, but a normal sky object. There we go. If you don't like it looking all pixelated, you can, of course, assign more RAM to that texture, like so, or even more. There we go. Um, if you want it to be um, have more, more brightness, you can mess around with this value here. And take it over 100%. There we go. And you can also mess around with the uh, exposure here. Um, and for some reason, I always like to turn that on. Okay, and let's put a floor in. And let's composite that into the background. And just for testing purposes, let's stick the little um, stick of character in there. Let's move the floor down. And what does scene be without ambient occlusion? Okay, so global illumination, I'm using the HDR presets, so I'm not messing around with the GI settings. And uh, let's see what we get. Okay, he is floating a bit off the floor then, but this is just a quick example of using HDR lighting. Now, one of the main issues with HDR lighting is it's a pano, and so it's taken from a center point of view. For, so for certain animations, it's no good. Also, um, because usually they're photo-based, the camera might not be in the position you want. So um, say you wanted to be in a position that was impossible to get to, say inside uh, someone's mouth or 2,000 feet up in the air, People don't usually have camera rigs in these positions, so you'd nat naturally need to use a CG scene and capture your own pano. So, um, but if you do want to capture your own photo pano, there are some routes to look at, so we can quickly look at these. Um, so if you want to become a budding, a budding VR photographer, you need a lot of gear. You need one of these special um, mounts, you need a d decent camera, then you need to do photo stitching PT GUI. So it's, it's quite a, a big undertaking. Um, there are a series of existing 360 cameras. Not all of them are 360 by 360. Some of them are more just panoramic, but it's worth noting these aren't HDR cameras. They're great for doing reflection maps, um, but if you actually want to light the scene, you'd have to sort of fudge it in Photoshop to uh, create a fake HDR. There's quite a few free HDRs on this website, and it'd be remiss of me not to mention Grayscale Gorilla, who have these HDR packs for making studios, which are great and definitely worth looking at. I've also recently discovered uh, Street View, which is a plugin for Cinema 4D, where you can basically create a echo rectangular, which is the name for this uh, spherical stretched out image of pretty much any location on Google Street View. So that's a great tool. Um, again, if you want to make it into an HDR for lighting, you'll need to fudge it a bit in Photoshop, um, but it's still a fantastic tool to have. So anyway, um, back to the actual tutorial. Okay, so we're going to use a CG scene to create an HDR. So let's at random, let's choose, um, I quite like that one. Okay, so what you do is you get a sphere. The size doesn't matter, in fact, smaller is better because it's less likely to get obscured by something. So I'm just gonna make this 10 centimeters large. Um, make sure it's perfect render switched on, uh, but it doesn't hurt to increase the segments. I'm going to stick this at, let's say, about an average height plus stage height. So let's make this two meters high. 
and like I said, I'm going to stick it on stage behind where the presenter would be. So that's the lectern. I'm going to move that to here. Just checking it looks right. Yep. So that's probably roughly where their head would be. And then what we want to do is put a perfectly mirrored material on there. Other settings don't really matter. You can even turn them off if you want to. If you're in the newer versions of Cinema 4D, um, a legacy reflection should be fine. Just make sure it's turned all the way up. Stick that on your sphere. And then we need to bake texture. So um, Shift C to bring up the shortcut. Type in bake and bake textures there. Or you can go to select your objects tags, Cinema 4D tags, bake texture. That's where it lives. Okay, so we're going to choose an HDR, Radiance HDR, or HDRIs as these to be called. Um, then under options, we want reflection, which uh, should be around here somewhere. And there we go. And typically uh, for a proper HDR, you want the width to be twice the height, uh, just the way they are for some reason. Um, so uh, I'm going to do quite a low res one now just for the sake of the tutorial um, but really you want them sort of 8,000, 10,000 wide if not larger and then obviously half that height. Okay uh, let's choose a path let's create a um, temp folder on my desktop and let's call this um, CG. So what you have with all your settings, let's bake. Great, so that should be the HDR now exported. I'm just going to test this in Photoshop to make sure it's all worked properly. So I save that to my desktop. That's the one I wanted. Right, so you've got that very weird echo rectangular shape, so that's correct. Um, under image mode, it's shown as 32 bit. And we should be able to mess around with exposure if we want to. And what should happen is the areas that actually have lights should remain brighter. And also vice versa, um, if you turn up the exposure, they all become the brightest parts. So that's a fully functioning HDR image, ready to take back into the scene. And the nice thing about this solution is you can stick your um, capture sphere anywhere. So if, for example, you had a uh, license for DM or Dem Earth, and you wanted to do a camera way up in the sky for doing, I don't know, plain HDRs, you can do that. Um, if you want to do an anatomy one, and you have a model of someone's um, head, you can do inside their mouth. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff that you couldn't normally do with regular cameras, and then use those HDRs for lighting. So a uh, very quick workaround, uh, other than the render time, and you can get some pretty cool results.